So if you're finding the greatest common factor for the variables, by the way, um, the greatest common factor for the variables is just how many variables there are that are common for both. So if one term has four x's and the other one has two, the greatest common factor for the variable x would be two of the x's. All right? Not 2x, but x squared is how you would pull that out. The product of the factors from steps 1 and 2 is the greatest common factor of the monomials. We pull that out, and then it looks like something like we did from the last unit. right? Maybe it would look like 4x cubed times uh, 3x minus 8. right? Now, we're used to distributing at this point, which is how you would check to make sure you've done it right. But after you pull out a greatest common factor, it's going to look like this, all right? So your answers will look something like this. Eventually, this first term here, the factor, the greatest common factor, will also be a polynomial that we pull out, which is factoring by grouping, really. Write an equivalent expression by factoring out the greatest common factor. All right, so I'm going to look at each of the terms individually. And I'm going to write the prime factorization of these. That's how I'm going to do it. If you don't like it that way, then use your own way, all right? And that's OK, too. So the first term I have right here is 4xy squared. So I've got 4xy squared. And this is that factor tree thing I was telling you about. So I just find two factors of 4, which in this case, I'm just going to use 2 and 2. We don't want to use 1 in itself because otherwise we can have an infinite no amount of ones. So this ends up being 2 times 2 times x times y times y. What this does is it helps me to see all the factors, and it helps me to list them out so that if I find other common factors, I know what I'm pulling out of, well, the expression, or what will be the parentheses, all right? So the next one is the 16xy cubed. 16 would split up into 8 and 2. And then 8 splits up into 2 and 4, which splits up into 2 and 2. That's the prime factorization of 16, is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Right, I had 4, 2 circled there. Not that, I mean, that came a little sloppy, but I've got an X. I've also got three Y's as well. Now I'm going to look at this negative 8 X squared Y squared. So negative 8 X squared Y squared. 8 splits up again. Well, I guess we didn't do an 8 yet. So I'm going to use 4 and 2. 2 is prime. 4 splits up into 2 and 2. So that gives us, I'm going to write it down here, but in the same color. Uh, I'm going to have a negative 1 because that's a negative 8. And then I've got times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 x's and times 2 y's. All right, so now what I'm going to do is find the greatest common factor amongst these three terms, the red, purple, and the blue. So we can see we've got a 2 that's in common. So that's a 2 that I can pull out. But then I've also got another set of 2's that I can pull out. So I'm going to multiply that. And yes, we're multiplying all of these that we can pull out from these three terms because these are factors. Uh, the top term doesn't, that red term there, it doesn't have any more 2's that are common. So even though right here we've got a purple and a blue 2 right there. Sorry, that looks like a Z. But even though we've got these two twos, the third term doesn't have a two, so there's, it's not a common factor for the three terms. That's important to remember there. Now we've got this x with these other two x's. So I'm going to pull that out. And then I've got this y with, well, these other two y's. So times y. Uh, looks like I've got another one, actually. So times another y. Now, again, this is just the greatest common factor specifically for these three. And that gives us 4xy squared. Now, in parentheses, we're going to put what was left. 
the first term was in red there. And see how there's, we used up all of the red factors. So what would be left? Well, we could multiply it by 1. So we're going to put a 1 there. All right. And then up here we see that it's added to the purple terms. All that's left there is the y. So I'm going to pull that. I'm going to keep that in the parentheses. Oh, yeah, what the heck? It looks like it was boxed. Thank you. Uh, so 2 times 2 is 4. Good catch on that. And then the blue one, yes, we got this 2 and this x. So that's a 2x, which, uh, and the negative 1 if you want. That's just going to make it a minus right there. So this would be the, an equivalent expression factoring out the greatest common factor, which was 4xy squared. Is the one yeah, that red one is extremely important because now let's say that I wanted to check, not that everyone does or ever actually wants to, but if I distribute this back into the parentheses, then I should get the same expression that we started with. And this goes, goes to the point, if I multiply that by 1, it doesn't change the term. Um, that's, that's very good, yep. That's very good. Right? We don't usually show that 1. So technically, it's a phantom 1. It exists, it's just that you don't see it.